So if the general understanding of this period is the church was a huge asshole, essentially, to most human beings, and what did you find that fundamentally complicated that narrative? I mean, you're not denying any of that, right? I mean, it's hard to deny. Um, no, and that's, if, if I had to critique the book a little bit, I think I kind of take that for granted a little bit. I do think it's an important backdrop, right? Like, and I, I think most people assume the church and church leaders, the Vatican bishops, was pretty bad during this period. And I think in my mind, I assume readers know that because there's been a lot written about that, sort of the general impression. So I want to set that up as the background and then say, yet here are some examples of, despite all that, people did some good work back then and their stories deserve to be part of the history as well. Especially but since maybe, that work took place at the locality and, and, and not particularly well publicized. That Part of the frustration of being Catholic in America is that you have a hierarchy issuing whatever statements they issue or the odd occasional um, badly phrased word or, or sentence. But then you also know just by living in the church that it's full of other people who are actually quietly doing a lot of good. And it's very hard to convey that to people on the outside. Give, tell, us, tell us about, tell us about the, the, the what person who, the, the Sister Carol, this nun who, who is one of the first people that you identified who somehow for some reason decided that gay men dying of AIDS was being what she was going to devote her life to. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. There is this sort of underground good work, people motivated by the gospel to actually do live Christian lives, right? But they're not always good at promoting themselves. And Catholic sisters, I think, are especially, um, they find themselves in the situation where they're doing this good work, but maybe it kind of goes under the radar. And but they're instructed, great... they're instructed not to tell the world. That's the point. It's the main thing about these Catholic charities is that you can be doing amazingly, but you're, the idea that you go out and brag about it is obviously counter to the very faith that you're practicing. It's true. And so many of these sisters I talked to said, no, we just did the work. That's what we were supposed to do. That was our job. And there's this humility that <laughs> I actually find frustrating sometimes because what they did was extraordinary, heroic work. And I believe them, though, when they say that they think they were just doing their job, like this is what the gospel tells them to do. So they did it. I'm glad that some of these stories are going to get out there more, especially Carol's. Well, tell us, tell us her story. Yeah. So uh, uh, Carol Balthashevitz, she was the first person after my friend who I talked to about this topic. She was a Catholic nun. She was a hospital sister of St. Francis, an order that ran several hospitals throughout the Midwest. She worked in an ICU in an emergency room up in Wisconsin. Very demanding work. She had done it for a while. She was good at it, but she was a little burnt out. So she wanted something of a break. So she found a listing for a home care nursing job in Belleville, Illinois. Now, Belleville is in southern Illinois. It's about 30 minutes from St. Louis, but it's a very small city. And once you leave Belleville, it's just cornfields, soybean fields. It's a very rural part of Illinois. So she took a job down there and was settling in. It definitely was a slower pace. She started to think, maybe I did the wrong thing. I'm a little bored here, actually. But then she remembers the first time she encountered someone with AIDS. Her boss had sent her out to a very small uh, town in this part of the country. And she encountered a young man. And this, he had uh, grown up in this town, discovered he was gay, decided he had to leave because there was just no future for him there. So he packed up and moved to New York. And he wanted to uh, start a career in performing arts and actually did pretty well. He landed a spot uh, with the Joffrey Ballet, was really uh, getting his life on track, uh, meeting friends, forming a good social network. And he suddenly found that he was sick. So he tried to make it work in New York for a while, but eventually it just didn't. He didn't have the support network he needed. So he moved back home. And when Carol is recounting the story to me, she says she'll never forget what the parents of this young man told her when she arrived to help. They said that when he came home, the young man told them that he was gay, that he had AIDS, and that he was dying. And each one was just more shocking than the next to the parents who had no idea about any of this. 